This is BTV Business Television. Hello, I'm Taylor Tone. And I'm Jessica Kachachek. Welcome to BTV Business Television. If you've recently caught gold fever due to higher gold prices, look no further than the Yukon. Once regarded as the place next to Alaska by some within the mining community, the Yukon is enjoying a third gold rush and is quickly becoming a hotbed for much sought after critical minerals. This week, we'll check in with leading resource companies, each with a unique and compelling story to tell. And we'll hear from key thought leaders to find out why the industry is bullish on the region. All this and more ahead on BTV Business Television. Well, the thing that's drawn me to the Yukon is the vast exploration potential. It's a greenfields frontier. And we've seen some tier one discoveries being made over the last few years both in gold and critical minerals. So if you can go in, be a first mover on a particular commodity or initiative and make a major discovery, you can get a large land position, basically control a district very early on. That's not possible to do in a lot of places in the world, but in a frontier region like the Yukon, you can do that. Game-changing discoveries are a rare occurrence when it comes to precious metal exploration but Snowline Gold believes it has one. At their flagship Rogue property, just one of eight greenfield projects that can be found on the 300,000 hectare land position the company has amassed in the Yukon. All told, it represents one of the territory's largest mineral portfolios. And if recent exploration results are any indication, things are about to get a lot more interesting. We're still in the exploration stages, but we've made a substantial discovery, uh, specifically the valley discovery on our rogue project. We've shown that there's a large zone of near surface, relatively high grade mineralization that's very continuous and uh, very, very exciting. It's a very unique discovery. Fewer and fewer of these are being made on a global scale, uh, and yet the demand is still there. And so finding something like this near surface in a you know, very favorable setting for future development is, uh, it's really a, a rare opportunity. Excitement around the Valley Discovery is enhanced by the massive potential of the Rogue property. What drew us into the Rogue area was the district scale potential and the, uh, the anomalous stream sediment geochemistry coming off a lot of creeks uh, in this area. So there's this really interesting, unique geological feature, and it just lit up in terms of the, of the stream ge uh, geochemistry. We think that what we've discovered so far is just the tip of the iceberg. If anyone knows the potential of the Yukon, it's Scott Berdahl, who has lived there most of his life, much of it working with his dad, an award-winning prospector. Being based in the Yukon, it's very advantageous. It's nice to have our boots on the ground and we can develop strong relationships uh, with, uh, with the local government, uh, with First Nations, with uh, suppliers, with communities. You know, if there's uh, an event going on in a community, it's, it's not much for me to just hop in the car and drive out there and go. So it's not like we have to set up big Zoom calls or, or fly across the continent or fly intercontinentally to, to go and find things. It's literally often just right across the street. And so uh, that gives us a, a strong home ice advantage. The home ice advantage is sure to be a factor as Snowline charts its course for the months ahead. 2024 is going to be our biggest year yet. We have three drills on site and uh, we're looking to bring in a fourth. We'll have two of those drills uh, actively advancing the Valley target. And then we're keen to keep looking at the regional targets. There are a lot of uh, low hanging fruit and, uh, and with our discovery at Valley, that makes it all that more exciting to uh, look at the other targets in the vicinity. Snowline recently announced a new prospecting discovery just 12 kilometers from its Valley target. It's a new development that investors will want to keep an eye on. Coming up on BTV, more promising investment opportunities. Within 25 kilometers, we already have 18 million gold equivalent ounces in resources. Never mind the new discoveries out there. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. 
The number one thing that makes Yukon an incredible place to invest is the collaboration and the partnerships that we bring. It's the right sized place to get the job done and to advance projects and you'll really notice that um, on our property tours where we see industry, all levels of government and our incredible supply service sector come together. We can just really connect with each other and support a very holistic ecosystem that moves projects forward. This has been a transformative year for Banyan Gold. In addition to issuing a new mineral resource estimate that adds significant ounces to its Ormac Gold project, the company has taken some important steps in the project's development. Through it all, the excitement surrounding Ormac continues to build. The future and the potential for this project to move forward are getting better with all the work that we're doing to continue to de-risk it. We're doing the uh, metallurgical work. We're doing some high-level scoping studies, which will help give us an idea of where you'd mine first from an engineering perspective. Uh, that's really informative. In addition to that, we're starting to look at some of the environmental aspects, which will inform mining, as well as be so important in permitting. We're in a really good position when we're ready to define what this project is and move into permitting, we're gonna be well positioned for that. And quite frankly, that's a huge advantage for us to move this project forward. Based on the location of Ormac, the project checks a lot of boxes. We are in a very unique position. We are the fifth largest open pit project in North America. There are not very many projects that have seven million ounces in a tier one safe jurisdiction where you can permit mines, where you've got security of tenure with existing infrastructure, roads, hydropower already on the property. You know, that is exceptional from a capital cost perspective. Our drill costs are $300 per meter all in, which compared to many of our peers uh, is exceptionally low. And we're very efficient with our dollars and that's how we've got to where we are now. So, um, you know, we can do a lot with the money we have in the treasury this year. The Ormac Gold Project also finds itself in the heart of vastly underexplored and fertile terrain. We have 300 square kilometers. We've explored less than 5% with drilling. You know, it, it really shows there's lots more here in this district and these intrusion related belts, they are belts. Within 25 kilometers, we already have 18 million gold equivalent ounces in resources. Never mind the new discoveries out there. With potential like that, Ormac is attracting a lot of attention. Having been to lots of conferences and talked to people, I can see that people want to know about our deposit. It's a pretty exciting time. Banyan plans to continue technical work, including metallurgy, with a strategically planned drill program starting in early summer, which is expected to generate news flow throughout the year in this strong gold market. North is the future. So to me, Yukon is one of the places where we, we tried and succeeded in building mines, but we haven't looked for everything. We've been finding what we're looking for. We, we haven't been looking for everything. And it'll be interesting to see more of exploration companies going into the Yukon and looking for the other minerals that may be there, but we haven't looked. I, I remember 2002, we became one of the biggest and better producer of diamond. But 10 years before that, people would, would have told you that Canada doesn't have diamond, but we were not looking for it. When we come back, more investment ideas to bolster your portfolio. How big is this? These deposits, if you look at Fort Knox, you look at Victoria Gold, five million plus ounces is not an unreasonable target. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. For the 125, 140 years or so, the people have been up there. They have prospected. They've looked at the surface. In a modern geological sense, the Yukon has not been explored. There is much about the Yukon that is just simply not understood at all. There's a century of, of exploration and development ahead in the Yukon. Just two short years after drilling began at its 386 square kilometer RC project, Sika Gold announced an initial inferred resource of 1.34 million ounces of gold. 
but the company believes there's more potential. Based on location alone, RC could have the makings of a major project that investors will want to keep an eye on. Yeah, the Tombstone Gold Belt's been known for a while. It's a belt of rocks that stretches across Yukon and Alaska. That's where Kinross's Fort Knox Gold Mine is. Victoria Gold is now producing from the Eagle Mine. There's been over 11 million ounces of additional resources found since uh, 2020 by people working in the Tombstone Gold Belt in the Yukon alone. Our deposits, the Blackjack and Iger, same geology, same age, and both those deposits are open for expansion. We haven't fully drilled them off. And there's also another potential deposit midway between the Blackjack and the Iger, the saddle zone, where we have four drill holes that have all hit. The Yukon is familiar territory to both Sika CEO Corco and Mike Berkey. Together, their decades of experience have proven to be a competitive advantage. I worked for the Yukon Geological Survey for 20 years, so I'm very familiar with the geology of the Yukon, and it's been a real pleasure to work with Sitka Gold in unraveling the potential on the Clear Creek area. In addition to an expanding resource, the project has essential infrastructure close at hand. The RC Gold project, we access it either by driving from Whitehorse or you can fly direct to Dawson City. Uh, they have a 5,000 foot paved runway, so you can land 737s there. And we're about a two hour drive from Dawson. We're only about 30 kilometers as a crow flies from the power line. So a lot of really substantial benefits in the infrastructure that we have. As the potential of the RC Gold project comes into focus, one key question remains. How big is this? These, these deposits, if you look at Fort Knox, you look at Victoria Gold, you know, five million plus ounces is, is not an unreasonable target. To date, we've only found the two deposits, but there's nine known gold bearing intrusions on our RC Gold project. So there's a lot more potential outside of the discoveries that we've made already. We're just getting going and we're pretty excited about the success we've had so far. Sika is well financed for 2024 and plans to drill up to 15,000 meters this year at their flagship project in the Yukon. Cascadia Minerals, a recently formed copper gold exploration company, has hit the ground running at their flagship Catch property in central Yukon. They've just completed the first ever diamond drill program on their property and made quite a significant discovery on the first and second holes. The first one uh, turned 45 meters of 0.3 copper and just a little bit less gold. And our second hole, a much broader uh, intersection of 116 meters of 0.3 copper and 0.3 gold. It's very rare to find uh, this type of mineralization in your first couple of holes. So usually copper gold porphyries take maybe 20, 30, 50 plus holes to even find out where you are. So we've really de-risked this project by at least finding some mineralization. And we're not even in the hottest or the higher grade areas of, of these typical deposits. This initial excitement is amplified by the fact that the Catch property lies within a renowned exploration hotbed. The Catch project is uh, located within the Stikine terrain in the Yukon. Uh, it's very important because there's been major deposits, copper gold deposits in British Columbia in what's called the Golden Triangle, but it actually goes up into the Yukon, almost through Whitehorse, right up to a town called Carmax, where our project is located. Nobody had really systematically looked for these type of deposits in the Yukon, so we're the first movers that are really looking systematically in this terrain for copper gold projects. The catch property was actually discovered by a young prospector that Cascadia Management knew from the past. He decided to option his find to the company, and they're glad he did. And when we first looked at it, we were like, wow, there's quite a lot of copper and gold mineralization on this project. And there's almost a kilometer of walking around and finding copper and gold mineralization. And then further down two kilometers away, we found uh, 30 grams gold and almost 4% copper in outcrop. So it's unbelievable that these kind of projects can still be found in 2023 and beyond and with all that surface mineralization. I mean, that's one of the, the greatest things about the Yukon is there's still untouched areas where you can find brand new discoveries. 
If Cascadia continues to get great results, this find could represent the ground floor of a significant opportunity. Investors should pay attention to Cascadia because we're one of the rare new companies that have a brand new copper gold discovery. So uh, we're very well positioned to uh, create value. 2024 promises to be a busy year for Cascadia as they initiate a new drill program that will step out on the 2023 Discovery Holes. Coming up, more investment insights for your consideration right here on BTV. And we're still finding some placer creeks with gold right on the bank. So that's what I can't still believe about the Yukon. It's that virgin of territories. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. There's just so much potential, so much opportunity. Uh, the story of the Yukon uh, over the last number of years has been very strong. We're seeing a lot of majors coming into this jurisdiction. They're starting to invest. Um, so we're very focused on ensuring the right infrastructure is in place. We're looking to see that the great partnerships are in place between those mining companies and the local First Nations. And really the sky's the limit on what can happen with some of the work that's being done in that area. 125 years ago, the Klondike area of the Yukon was the epicenter of a flourishing gold rush. Today, it's entering a new age of modern day exploration, led by White Gold, a company with a district scale flagship project by the same name. In a little more than a year, White Gold has defined a world-class resource and management insists it has only scratched the surface. The White Gold project is made up of a couple different ore zones. Uh, the Golden Saddle is the largest in total, 2.1 million ounces, on average grade of about two grams per ton, primarily open pitable. We've also made a couple of very significant new discoveries in the last couple of years. Uh, probably the most significant one is on our Betty property. That's contiguous to Newmont's coffee project and Western Copper and Gold's enormous uh, casino porphyry. So this is pure elephant country. We think those are company maker opportunities and we're really excited to do some more work down there as well. And we're still finding some placer creeks with gold right on the bank. So that's what I can't still believe about the Yukon. It, it's that virgin of territory. So if we we're playing baseball, we're probably in the third or fourth inning here. But White Gold isn't the only company that sees a golden opportunity. Yeah, White Gold is very fortunate to have two of Canada's best gold mining companies as partner. Agnico Eagle is one of them. In addition to capital, their expertise has been a wonderful relationship. Kinross Gold is our other partner. I think that really speaks volume to the type of opportunity that we have and why this company is so unique. In addition to this support, White Gold will soon benefit from a key government initiative. This part of the Yukon has been placer mined for quite a long time. So there's a significant network of placer roads, which helps access the different properties. On our property, we have a large camp and an airstrip. However, what's very significant, unique, and will be a complete game changer for our company is a program known as the Resource Gateway Project. This has been sponsored by the territorial and federal governments where combined they're investing hundreds of millions of dollars to upgrade infrastructure and create new infrastructure specifically to support mining and exploration. In our area, there's a Northern Access Gateway Road that's being planned. This road will give us road access to almost the entire portfolio. It makes almost anything you find economical and that is critical to the development of a camp. While it's still early days, White Gold sees a development process similar to the highly successful Timmins Gold Camp and believes there are decades of opportunities ahead. Western Copper and Gold is developing a premier copper gold mine. Its casino project located in Yukon is the largest critical metals venture in Canada. And if all goes according to plan, it will be the country's largest critical metals mine. Casino right now has a full feasibility on it. It was done in mid 2022, so quite current. We're taking the project through the permitting stage. It is uh, a large copper gold porphyry, a very important asset globally. That's what attracted me to the company. It's about 11 billion pounds of copper, 20 million ounces of gold. It's been a known project in the sector for some time. 
but it's really kind of come into its own over the last three years. I think this is something that could really put Yukon on the map uh, and hopefully be a driving force of its economy and its prosperity for a very, very long time. While the project has a significant gold resource, it's casinos' copper deposits that are getting the bulk of attention. We've seen that these, these assets are harder to find. They're in tougher jurisdictions typically. They take longer to come through the gestation period to come to market. So we're kind of behind the eight ball in terms of bringing these assets to market for an economy and a, and a society that's decarbonizing uh, all the time. So, so it's really a bit of a crunch, honestly. Um, and, and assets like Casino Matter from that perspective in terms of the copper and the molly that it could deliver to market. While the demand grows for Western Copper's assets, the company has been busy lining up support of some heavy hitters. Rio Tinto is a 10% shareholder in the company. Mitsubishi Materials just below 5%. So quite a strong endorsement from some of the smartest people in the copper space. They've taken an immense effort of doing diligence on the company. They've come through with very positive views on the project. Their involvement more recently has really kind of kicked things up a notch. So, uh, so an asset that's kind of finding its rhythm, I would argue. No wonder Singh is feeling so optimistic. I'm highly excited about the future of Western Copper. I mean, I just joined the company, uh, made a significant investment when I did, so I'm, I'm all in on Western Copper. You know, everyone throws around world class a little too easily, but this certainly could qualify. I mean, we've got the right asset. The Yukon is doing a phenomenal job putting in place frameworks to allow the asset to progress. The government's been helpful from an infrastructure perspective. The First Nation relationships are extremely strong and supportive. So far as you know, assets that matter globally, it's a very short list. We have one of the better ones. Western will continue the permitting process to de-risk casino, all to advance the project closer to its ultimate goal. I've had the really amazing privilege of being the brand ambassador for Yukon Mining Alliance and developing Invest Yukon for nearly 15 years. It's been amazing to see it grow from having to originally explain that Yukon was this place beside Alaska to something that is now a well-known space uh, in the global sector. And when we walk in somewhere, people go, that's the Invest Yukon team. Uh, they're excited to see us, they're excited to hear what's new, and to see the companies grow and to flourish in advance. Um, I was here before there were producing mines, before there were majors in Yukon, uh, and before some of these districts were known. And so now to, to stand here and to welcome new people to the territory and to the story, it's just a really exciting thing to be a part of. The Yukon has certainly come a long way since the days of the original gold rush, thanks in large part to Invest Yukon, which has helped showcase the territory as a mineral-rich region with significant untapped potential. And with all the momentum it's helped to create, the door is open to many exciting Tier 1 opportunities going forward. Thanks for joining us today. For BTV, I'm Jessica Kachachak. And I'm Taylor Tone. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Business Television for the latest interviews on companies in the markets. And until next time, may your portfolio prosper.